Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Swadik Mayanja. You guys can call me Q. Um, and we're on another episode of the Everyday Hero Show, where I bring to you people in your life, people in my life, that do amazing things but do not get the credit that they so deserve. We've had this good friend on the show previously, and he's back again in the flesh this time. Last time you saw him through his grave. He's back in the flesh. I get to have some brunch with him. My favorite meal of the day. Nate Meninger. Welcome back, sir. Thank you very much for coming back on the show. Of course. All right, so Nate, let's start from the beginning, AKA from the last time we stopped. The last time we had a conversation, you were down in Florida, you were um, playing lacrosse, or you were in between seasons. I don't know the exact details, but there was lacrosse in your mind and you were thinking about going off to the football team. Um, before we even get there, real quick, for the people who haven't seen it, who are you and where are you from? My name is Nathaniel Menninger. Yes. And uh, I go by Nate. Touche. From Newton. I like to say Brighton, Massachusetts, because like, <laughs> that means you're from Boston. I want to be from Boston because that means you're tougher. Exactly. Um, so I'm from, ba I'm from Brighton, Newton. I would say Newton second, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Grew up with you. New North, go Tigers. And that's about, I mean, that's it. That's, that's, it. that's me and that's Perfect. what I'm That's all we needed to know. So, last time we talked, you were about to, you were done with your, you were, you were playing lacrosse, you were about to start football. What happened? Tell us what happened down in Florida. Okay, so I was down in Florida, which is a terrible place. Sorry <laughs> for anyone from Florida. I was, I was in the boonies of Florida, which okay. is just... So that might be terrible. It's brutal. But Miami... Miami's a fun time, but I mean, I was in like, like where cops is filmed. <laughs> that, that's where I was. That's where I lived. So I'm living but, there. You know, that's the fact. Uh, every cops episode is filmed in Florida. I get you not every cops episode. All right, whatever. All right. So you were down there. So I was down there living, and I tried to play sports again because that's what I went to college for. Yeah. At uh, Virginia. Nate, uh, children out there, please understand. Do not go to college for sports unless. Yeah. You should go. I mean, actually, that's actually, if you do get, if you get recruited, sure, but like, for the majority of you out there, don't go to college for sports. What? Don't Why? go to, don't. Go to the college to learn yeah, something. I had the greatest time of my life, the greatest parties, and <laughs> it was absolutely insane. Playing let's, on national let's television. Let's just agree to disagree. You're playing on national television. Let's agree to disagree. You on national television? I was not on national television. But, there's only a very few, yeah. lucky few. All right, there we go. Talented if few. If you're old, if you're the best, not that I was the best player. You're on the if best If you're teams. good enough to be on the best team, then you should go. Then you should go for it. But you're saying if you suck, you should never play. No, not never play. Play, but don't that, don't make that your only reason for going to school. Yeah, yeah. So well, that were, was my only reason. All right. So you were down there. You decided that you wanted. So to then play. I I got really hurt. Tried to play again in Florida. Did my uh, I took my sixth year, I guess, my fifth year. I took two years off because I couldn't run. Tried to play. I was going to go to play football because I wanted to play football. You know, that was the whole dream, to try and play football professionally. Yes. And uh, I couldn't run. So I gave that up, dropped out. They paid for everything down there, so that was fine. Dropped out, and yeah. And then, so, let, so, like, so, let me tell you guys something. Let me just be real clear about something. I pride myself on my decision-making skills. I pride myself on being decisive, knowing what I want, going to, out to get it. But I also put a whole lot of thought behind everything I do. There's like a month of research before I make any big decision. There's like three months of research before I make any big move. There's a lot that goes behind all of my thinking. But I do pride myself on my decision. My friend over here, Nate over here, he makes decisions very quickly uh, and very intense decisions. And uh, just at least from the outsider's point of view. No, no, least, you're completely at, right. At least from the outside point of view, he makes decisions and he goes in it 100%. Like, today he'll decide he'll go to, like, fucking Jamaica, and he's gone tomorrow. That's the kind of decision I'm talking about. The day he'll decide to be a mountain climber, and he'll be on a mountain in a week from now, halfway, like, 3,000 feet up in the fucking sky. Nate, you left football. Yes. And since you left Florida, I've seen, from the outside's point of view, from Facebook, from Instagram, from all the socials, I've seen you in Asia. I've seen you in these incredible countries doing insane things. Why don't you tell us where have you been? So after leaving Florida, sports was always done. That was my plan ever since I was a young kid to become a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's 
it wasn't necessarily that I loved it, but I felt that I was gifted athletically more so than anyone really I knew, and I felt I was obligated to be. There's no reason to talk shit. I'm standing right here. Actually, <laughs> honestly, you guys want to know, this guy and I used to go against each other every day to hit, and he hit really, really hard. It's okay. Really hard. I'll take it. But I was no. a white. I was a white guy. Really <laughs> Not necessarily as hard as him, but that's rare enough. All right, so you left the floor. He was good. Like he was really good at football. Thank you. Um, but we also went to a shitty public school in Massachusetts, so no one's good. Anyways, dropped out, and since sports could no longer be the option, I had to find my second plan, which was always my first plan, but it was my second plan after sports. You know what I mean? Yeah. So sports court. always had that something. Yeah. And my real plan was to do this stuff, but sports was always a first. So this stuff was going to be to attempt extreme professions and challenges as an amateur, right? So you set out to do X, Y, and Z with no real knowledge base. Okay. So that was what I was going to do. That was my setup. So the first thing I was going to set out was going to cross the entire scope of Asia from the westernmost point to the easternmost point, which no one had done yet. Uh, so I moved to D.C. to get the visas. Uh, I went to D.C. for two and a half months. The visas and everything, it was a little dangerous. Like, so wait, can I just say something? Real, cut you off right here real quick. Um, were you being sponsored by anyone? Was there a company backing you? Or was this, Nate, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it by myself. Now, so originally I tried to get it funded and it did some fundraising and, and I realized I really, really, really hate asking for money in any sense. Yes. So it's fair. That's a really hard thing to do. It's like when you said, why wouldn't you branch out of doing nursing things or everyday hero? Yes. Because you can't fake it. You can't, you can't fake it. People fake it. I can't, fa I can't fake shit to try and get money. I, exactly. I hate the concept of asking for money. hate it. So I, that failed. So I bailed on that trip across Asia and I uh, decided the next best alternative. So. I bought a ticket to Nepal, and I left for the Himalayas to do two things. To live in a monastery and take a vow of silence, and uh, to do high altitude ice climbing. That's insane. So I left for Nepal. So I always thought James Bond movies had like these monasteries in the mountains, and you just like knock on the door and like... like hey, I would have signed up. You're like, you're like, hey, what's up? Have you seen Doctor Strange? That's, I literally thought this was this. Like, can I just live here for like two months, three months, and I won't exactly. speak the whole time, and I'll do what you guys do. Exactly. That's what I imagined. So I sat down in my house, and I taught myself Nepali online, and I just taught myself the language. So Shut I figured the fuck if up. I taught... All right, pause. How? Nate, how, actually, okay, first how of all, long did it take you? Anyone who says that I really want to learn a language and doesn't that? know the language is bullshit. Really? Because if they really want to learn it, it's so easy to learn language. It's so easy to learn Okay, it. Can, we, can we put pause rate real quick? I feel like Nate is a very different human being. And, I just, and I'm being honest. I'm not trying to toot your horn, gas your head up. But education always came super fucking easy to me. Like, he would just sit in the class, not have a notebook open, not have the textbook open, and shit would just see, seep in and stay. Like, it would just be that yeah, way. Exactly. So I feel like you're not, no, not not normal, but I feel like you have a higher... No. No, definitely, I, bro. Uh -huh. Everyone has the same belief. I no, just... Okay, you you uh, think so. You, I, you must Intellect have, is a real thing. Intellect does vary. It does vary. Drive, and you're on the drive higher is the end. most important thing. Facts. Uh, All right, that, that all is real. Right? So how long did it actually take you to learn? Well, to be so comfortable enough. Legitimately, but, but I wasn't fluent in tools. Of course. I taught myself the language online. I learned the alphabet first, simple phrases, verbs, and I just kind of studied it. Were you around other people to practice this stuff, or was it all online? Yeah, just online. You can learn anything online. You can literally learn rocket science online. So I fucking love that. I took off. I fucking love that, mate. But in this process of two weeks, I figured out that these monasteries and mountains don't exist. <laughs> that I, I'm learning the language for no reason, so I was an idiot. So, like I said, I don't plan things out. I'd emailed a teacher, and I'd, I'd found out that they don't exist. So, right, that's instead, so sad, though. Instead, I was so it is really just Hollywood. It, instead, it is completely Hollywood. Well, kind of. Anyways, okay. I was redirected towards this course called Vipassana. You can do it in America, but I just wanted to do it in their heart. Of, of everything, you yes. know, the most extreme way possible. So, it's a 12-day course. You can't speak. You can't look into someone's eyes. You can't read. You can't write. You can't exercise. You sleep on the floor. 
if you want to do it extreme way, you don't eat afternoon. Uh, you don't eat yeah. after 12 in the yeah. afternoon. You wake up from 4 a.m. and you meditate on the floor 14 hours a day until 11 p.m. And then you go to sleep. And you go to sleep. And you literally, if you've ever played an RPG game, you know, a role-playing game, and you walk around the field and like, it's like hit A to talk to. It's basically like that, except you can never hit A. <laughs> and everyone's just standing there in the corner, just like looking down, and you just like walk by them, and it's like. Have you seen Game of Thrones? Yes. Have you had a little any, bit. So do you do you know like, Sansa? Not Sansa. Her sister, the little one, when she goes to that monastery and she has to kill fucking people. Do you know what I'm talking about? When she does that, when she poisons them or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Well, anyways, all I'm trying to say is it sounds super intense, and like. Obviously, oh, so when we, we had this conversation prior to being on camera, but um, when I was asking him, I told I said right off the bat when he told me that that must have been the hardest thing ever, and he said no because he'll tell you what he did after that is fucking insane. But like sitting down for fourteen hours, you said really you did hard. this for two weeks, right? Yeah. Was it like someone was watching you, making sure you were doing everything right? Was there, it there, like just self? Yeah, there are a few people who watch you. So the first five days are just meditating. It's like. Two hours and a break, then three hours and a break, then four hours and a break, then two hours and a break, then one, you know? And, you keep and when they say meditate, like meditate, like sit down, so I didn't know. Apple I sauce. didn't know what meditation was. I honestly thought it was for blanking weirdos. Yeah, exactly. I, this, is some Everyone weird, does. this is some weird stuff. You gotta be a hippie, you gotta be a lost mind, soul person. I don't know what's wrong with these people, but I used to laugh at them. Like, really laugh at them. Yes. And, uh, and also be scared. And that's all why I want to do it, because I'm scared of it, you know, because that's, that's how you grow up, do something you're scared of. So I went with no knowledge, and everyone else has been researching and done a class before and knows what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, I don't even know what meditation is. I get down, and basically the whole premise is meditation is the exact opposite of what I thought it was. And what is it? So it's not it's thinking. Me. It's just focusing on nothing more than your breath and your sensations. So it's not thinking about your life. It's not thinking about you know things that impact you. It's doing nothing more than focusing on your breath. So the first three days, you focus on nothing more than the breath going in and out of your mouth. That sounds really fucking annoying. Day five, you spend an hour, three times a day, separate days, on top of the other 12 hours where you can't move a muscle. You can't move a muscle. For, for an hour, you an want hour. to just, so are you laying down? You sit, crisscross, bucking at <laughs> So I'm not flexible, so that's really difficult. Well, neither am I. I've had five surgeries. Oh, I can't even, I'm sitting there. Were you able? Oh. No, I rigged up a little, I had a sweatshirt, I wrapped around my knees, and uh, excruciating pain. I mean, like, like real pain. Actually? Real, I mean, you can't move a muscle for an hour. You can, of but, course, but, but like you want to be competitive. Want, exactly. Right? I mean, the goal is to not move. Okay, I love that you just said you want to be competitive, because... Like, knowing Nate, knowing this man, he wants to do it right, he wants to be the best, he wants to he wants to accomplish the goal. Were you doing this in the mindset, when I think someone meditating, they want to clear their mind, be like spiritual, live up there, or were you doing it because you want to just get the task done? Get the task done. But do it, in the, do it in the, the way right it way. should be done. Yes. So that means like, okay, if they're going to say don't think, I'm not going to think. I'm going to do the instructions, follow the instructions, this is still ridiculous. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it to conquer each other another challenge. Only reason. Okay, so, all right, continue. So Only reason. That, so that you had a, uh, uh, by the fifth day, you were trying not to move the muscles. Three times a day. Three times a day. Were you ever successful? So first day, I think I was successful at night, and it was the most pain I've ever had. Not ever had, but I mean, it's a lot of pain, right? Like, what kind of pain? I mean, like, really, really severe pain. Like, is it because you can't move and you're like itchy and you like. No, like actually, because joint sitting down pain, isn't. Serious, serious joint pain. Your back starts to fucking spasm. I mean, like, you're in serious pain. And you move. And then, like, oh, they're like, oh, oh, and you're like, <laughs> relax. So at the beginning, I'm changing, I'm changing postures like, okay. every five seconds. Right? Because I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Oh, of course. My butt hurts, my arms hurt, my legs hurt days go on, I start to feel more, you know, you progress from the breadth of the nose to the breadth of the head to the arms to the legs to the feet to the whole body. Is it, are we good? Yeah, no, we're good. Sorry. Go ahead. Progressing? And, uh, yes. And basically, by day eight or nine, I was, I, since I've been following it so rigidly, mm -hmm. unlike the other people, because most of the people, they eat afternoon, they don't sleep on the floor, they don't really buy into it. Mm -hmm. um, but I really bought into it, as I do with everything. Yes. So I kind of hit, I hit the, the landmarks 
two days ahead of everyone. Right? I thought. Yes. Um, and I believe it. Like I, I like, there's no question in my mind. Like I believe it. I just do. Right. Well, it's knowing people. Everyone. Some people are, are are there too. Some people were beating me without a time. With uh, they had they were accomplishing it more quickly. Yeah. Uh, whatever. But in a different way. Anyways, uh, I left my body day eight. day nine. I'm doing these hour long. When you sits. say you left your body, what do you mean? I mean, I'm not in my body. I floated outside of my body. And so I keep going. Yeah. And, you floated uh, outside of your body. And I'm up above my body, looking at myself, and I'm like a monkey on the floor meditating. And I'm like, holy fuck. This is, is it, Okay. Are you being serious? Dead serious. Day nine, I turn to a pile of... The whole thing is, uh, the whole thing is about letting go of your love and your bullshit, which is hatred. Right, and if you do that, then you get rid of all pain. Right, this is their whole theory. Okay, so I'm meditating. I'm scanning my whole body now, and you basically it's like thing, feeling. The premise is, if I touch your arm, yes. you feel that. Yes. Right. Yes. That sensation. Yeah. The premise is to feel this. Right. Yes. This molecule and every single other molecule at the same exact time. Right. So you can feel the wind over here, as you can feel the temperature of your glass over here, and everything at the same time. So you just have pins and needles everywhere. It's kind of dope. Anyways, I got it. I left my body. And then this whole love and emotion thing, my head turned into a bag of McDonald's. And I'm thinking, oh my, a bag of I'm, thinking, I'm thinking, oh, this is what they mean by like, my my love is going to disappear. And sure enough, the bag disappears. And you know, this is all in your mind. Uh, oh, that's what it means. That's what it means. My love and my, my, <laughs> your my love is are gone. Your, your love is McDonald's. And all of a sudden, my body just transformed into cheeseburgers. And I started vibrating and like just gyrating my body. And I was like, I fucking love McDonald's. Yeah. I love it. And I'm not getting rid of it. <laughs> and I, it was the best thing ever. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So full wait. on hallucinations. Yeah. That's fucking. So I'm, I'm, but, I'm but you, my body. But, so I was about to ask. Do you think it was hallucinations? But you're right. You, so you think it's 100% hallucinations. Those were, yeah, but you do leave your body. Because if you think about it, you sit in a position for so long, you can feel every molecule, the shape of your body starts to disintegrate, to disappear. So you melt into the floor. It's called astral projection as well. Uh, people do it lying down in their beds. Uh, that's a whole other bullshit. So, everything. when you, so my question is like, when you go to sleep and you have a dream, is it the same feeling or is it a. So, this is the trippy thing. So, you keep doing this whole thing, right? And you, you, you start to lose your, yourself and everything, and, and it's really blowing your mind. Yeah. And then by day nine, day ten, you can't sleep. Okay. And the whole premise is what? You can't sleep. So, when you sleep, you're tossing and turning. Right? You toss and turn when you sleep. You don't know yeah. if you're tossing yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? Which means your body is reacting to stimuli, but you're not conscious enough oh, to, to, uh, to realize those stimuli. This, this, you enter like such a mental state. This yeah. is so ridiculous. It's so hippie, but it's a fact that you're now entering your subconscious state. So when you're sleeping, you can now feel those stimuli, which are reacting to your body. So I'm, in, I'm swimming in my dream now, and I can feel my arms swimming. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I move my arms to swim in the dream, and my arms are swimming in real life now, and I start to freak out. Really freak out. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. I start like, I'm, 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 I start like <laughs> screaming myself away, I start slapping myself. I hated it. But by the end, there's no pain. You sit for an entire hour, zero, I mean, zero pain. I go up to the guy after when we can talk, and I said, hey, like that last day, like, I sat for an hour and a half. You know, longer than the necessary time, and I didn't have a stitch of pain, like zero pain, without moving, without even moving an inch. And I was like, "What's good with that? You know, like, that doesn't make sense." And he's like, "Well, did you feel sensation? You know, did you feel like explosions of little things?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, that is pain, but you're so removed from your body that you can't recognize that you aren't recognizing the pain aspect of pain. You're just recognizing the still intensity." See, that blows my fucking mind. It blew my mind because I hate hippies. But now, I mean, no, 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 no. There's this is different than being a hippie. No, it's very. This is very different than being a hippie. Very like. No, because my our American hippie is like, oh, I want to hug some trees, let's smoke some weed, like let's be free. This is not the same thing. This is doing it. This is like monk status, like. Yeah, it's, it's serious. Can I ask, 
a deep question. Yeah, sure. Did this make you believe in God, or is this all science to you? Were you looking at it via science? Like, were you like, this is spiritual? Yeah, okay. this I'm is touching gonna take a thirty-minute argument to talk about. I'm not. I don't want to argue. I want to just know what you, what you felt. Did you like? Is this like me having hallucinations? Am I like just starving slash hungry slash I'm just getting used to the process, or is it like this is a spiritual experience? I'm like, this is, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. What you mean. So well, what today, did you? Feel? The main thing is. To to elicit this response that all of your emotions are internally caused. So if I hate you, yeah. that guy likes you. That other guy loves you. That girl thinks you're all right. That yeah. girl feels embarrassed. So it's all of our own sentiments causing emotion. It's not you, right? Which is the premise. You know, five people look at an elephant, they all feel different ways. It's not the elephant causing the emotion, it's themselves. It's themselves. So at the end, you, you, I, I was going back through all the people I hated in life <laughs> in my mind for the last 10 minutes because they were telling you to. And I, you know, first of all, I realized they were all women. Um, really? All women, like trainers and teachers oh, okay. that I just really didn't get along with. I'm sorry. And, uh, and I was just like forgiving, not them, because they didn't do anything wrong. I was just like, damn, it's just all Just letting fun. it be? It was kind of cool, but the, the whole God thing is, I used to be like very, very, very logical. Very logical. God doesn't exist, and uh, still very logical, but I don't, I don't believe in evolution anymore, so I don't believe in God, but I don't believe in evolution. God, I believe in... As you a, don't believe in evolution, but you don't believe in God? Yeah, it, it, this is like a huge conversation, but the point is, is I believe I in God, get to the I believe in God as, I believe, the, jump to the end, I believe in God as time. Right? Time is God. And that's why some of us don't refer to God with a name. Yeah. Because God is time. In, a, in an infinite world of time, which is what we have, infinite time, how things are created or destroyed, we are just one. And that's when you realize when you start buzzing, and your molecules buzz like the molecules in the air, and your body deteriorates. What's the difference between this and this? It's just the arrangement. And it's the hippiest bull crap ever. I mean, it does sound super hippie. I don't, I don't want to say it's bullcrap it, because it's it like, is holy true. Moly. It's like, I can't not start to and, and you said, how long was this process? That was two weeks. Two weeks. But I didn't think anything after that. At that point, I was just like, that was kind of cool. I'm never going to meditate again because that's a drug. I mean, that's a full-on drug. When you get to, when you get good at it, it's a full-on drug. So I was like, really? Yeah. Oh, full-on drug. I mean, you're just like tripping. Not tripping, but I mean, you're vibrating. Your ears are ringing. You're just like... Coming. Mate, this is fucking amazing. So I didn't, I never meditate again because I don't want to be addicted. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck it's out of here. It's the exact opposite of what they're saying. <laughs> meditate, meditate. Right? No, don't meditate. Because <laughs> you're going to get addicted. Yeah, no, seriously. There are people who've done they did 90 day courses. They've done like, I mean, one guy done 10,000 hours of science. 10,000 hours of silence? How many hours in a year? Do you know? Uh, Not 10,000, right? Because 10,000. Yes, because 10,000 has to be more than that. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, it's, it's like a year, like, third. Okay, whatever. All right, that's amazing. Just that alone would be, like, my... That alone would be, like, the best interview I've had so far. But it doesn't stop there, because that's just two weeks into your goddamn adventure. Wow. And then after that, because like I said, listen, he just spent all this time talking about his meditation, right? And now he's, and he told me that wasn't the hardest thing he did. Nate, what was the move after the meditation? How did you go from zero to literally 1,000? Not moving to doing the most extreme thing in the world. Tell me what was the... Well, this is actually cool. So I told you I taught myself the poly. I got there and I couldn't really speak that well. I could speak it when I spoke, but I had to manage the conversation. Yes. I had to lead it. You know, if you ever learn a language, it's easier to speak if you're leading it. You know where it's going. Yes. I got out of this where I hadn't spoken for 12 days, 14 days, and I spoke insane to Bali. It was insane. I could distinguish Okay, wait, 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 wait. My Time mind was like no. on fire. It was okay, like, okay, okay, stop, stop. Bing, 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 bing. Were you, because being in Nepal, were you hearing Nepali being spoken? No. No, so everyone was silent. It was zero. There's a little audio recording, but it was Hindi. Okay, but like once you got out of it, you were like a thousand yeah, percent. Your, your mind is firing at like a thousand percent. I mean, 
It's just your your mental Bro, power. Bro, this sounds is, so fucking. Your mental power is tenfold. So like, are you saying like, would you do this once a year, the first two weeks no, of every year? I would never do it again because I don't like it. But I would recommend it to every single person on earth, just like I would recommend shrooms. Or <laughs> or Facts. or I mean, really, the secret I recommend to every athlete. So I emailed my coach and I was like, look, if you have anyone that's injured and you want them to be a better athlete, send them through this. Because if you hate it and you can get through it, then you know that like you, your mind, your mental power will be so strong, you will accomplish anything that you want. Anyway, really, so strong. Anyway, so I left there and uh, then I just packed my bag and started hiking into the mountains. That's what you decide. I got with all of this mental power. You're gonna take it over the goddamn. Well, that was always my plan. I was gonna go oh, do God. this and then I was gonna go to Everest. And I wanted to do one of the peaks there, but it was the dead of winter. So, so that's a dumb idea. So most of the peaks are shut down, right? Because it's the dead of winter and the highest mountain range on Earth is pretty dead. Right? <laughs> okay. And I had gone to one guy in town. He said all the ladders were taken down. They weren't taking things. And I was like, oh, whatever. Okay. So I took a 14-hour bus. And these are like buses like... I don't know if you've ever been to a third world country, but like goats, chickens, someone's telling you to hold your baby. You're on this bus, and you're the biggest person by two and a half feet, <laughs> and your head is smashing against the ceiling, and the roads are literally worse than like, it's like literally driving over bodies. It's the worst road ever. Really? It's just and bouncing the time, all day, the whole time. fly off. It's for 14 hours. And it's the worst, it's the worst bus I've ever taken my entire life, times a thousand. We get there and just start hiking, and you just walk for, I went fast because I really hate hiking, so I went as fast as possible. So I finished that first hike in like 100 kilometers in a few days, and then you get to the mountains where that airplane is. So let, let's just pause right there, so understand like 100 kilometers in a few days, he just said it as like rough, it's rough off the much, shoulder. It is a lot. up and down. Nate, it's, up it's and a down. fucking lot. Nate, it's a lot. Up, up. 3,500 meters, so I say meters, that's like 10,000, 12, 14,000 feet. Then you're down to like 5,000 feet. Then you're up and then you're down. And you're just hiking all day. Were you by yourself? Like, well, yeah. who, who was so between, you? So between the meditation and this, I hadn't be, spoken about human beings in a while. Yeah. And there was, it was the dead of winter, so no one was hiking. There were no tourists. And I was, every time I stayed, to eat, we stayed in these little huts. And by now my Nepali was good, so I was staying in these little huts with just straight families, just eating in the back of these really crabby huts with dung, yak dung fires. That's how I spent Christmas. I spent Christmas around a pile of yak shit <laughs> burning. <laughs> just writing. So you spent your, your Christmas around some yak dung, and then yeah. what happened? So by Christmas I had made I made it up. All the way up the mountain, I've hiked for. So what peak? Do you know what the what mountain it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first I went to Everest Base Camp. Uh, Everest Base Camp is shitty. Don't okay. recommend it. I'm sorry. It's very austere, very gray, solemn. And like, were you like, very was there a site at the end? It's very ghostly. Yeah, it's just uh, they have the Kumba Icefall, which is the famous icefall that everyone's okay. heard of. Okay. But it's like, it's just depressing, and there's not much there. That's not a good view. Okay. So I walked all the way up there, and uh, and I found these Nepali guys, and I managed to finagle my way into a, finding this guy who could give me a, a tour. You, you don't need a tour, but the government mandates you have a guide if you're going to attempt a peak for certain peaks. So I wanted to do Island Peak, which they told me was shut off, but I found out that it wasn't shut off, but that was the last possible day you could go. And uh, I was Nate, like, okay, rock. this is like, this is, I gotta go, obviously. So I, the price is usually like two plus grand. I got it for like 200. And, uh, Wait, really? Yeah, because I was just gonna go, I was gonna go the quickest possible way. I was gonna go from the highest town, just that night go and then summit. And uh, which usually you do like a full expedition. But I was like, nah, no, fuck that. I'm good. I'm good. My athlete will be all right. So we go up there, I meet the guide. He gives me the ice axe, the crampons, the helmet, the boots, pack my bag, leave my stuff, take off into the town. We hike another two and a half hours oh my God. through a glacier. And we get to this 
base camp where there's like a couple tents set up and uh, go in and there's a porno mag there. It's like, well, this is the only thing that's there with a porno mag. It's, a, it's like a stove and a porno mag. It's like, what are these Nepali It's the guys good doing? life. Yeah, it's like, what? There's nothing there. You're just, in a, you're just in a tent on the side of the mountain. Yeah. And uh, there's like two other hikers, I think. Anyways, we set out at 11 or 12.30. Obviously, I can't sleep. Okay. Set out at 30, yeah, 30 minutes a.m. And uh, I had one bottle of water, started hiking. Um, I'm already, I've been hiking for what now, like 14 days, 13 days. I've already hiked like maybe 220 kilometers, 250. My body is like already yeah. hurting. So we hike up and uh, my guy is like smoking cigarettes the whole time. During the hike? These guys are gods. Really? Smoking cigarettes, he's not drinking, he doesn't drink water. And, uh, what in the world? I mean, these guys are gods. I, I did like a, a like a, like a 3,000 foot hike and I was like, bro, if I don't take a nap before we walk down. Yeah, so we're at. I don't even understand how that's possible. We're at, we're at 6,200 meters, which is equivalent to 21,000 feet, maybe a little bit more. Fuck. So the breathable oxygen at ground level is 27.9. Oxygen at that is 8.9. Whereas at peak of Everest is 7.8%. So we're, don't it, do this at home. It's similar to Everest peak in terms of oxygen level. Yes. It's less, it's less. I mean, it's more. But you can, there's more people oxygen. You don't need oxygen, but it's fucking sucks. So we're going. Oh. Were you slowing him down? Was he slowing you down? Or was he going at your pace? So at first, I'm wearing five layers. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm very, if you know me, I'm very like stubborn. So I'm like, all right, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So I'm hiking fast, and I start sweating, and I want to take off all my clothes, because I sweat a lot. And uh, he's like, no, keep it off. And I start, and I'm really sweating, really sweating. And I'm drinking while I'm staying on top of my water. After the 14 days, I've learned how to stay on top of the water intake, you know? Always stop and drink a quarter of a water bottle, even when you're not thirsty. And uh, we had talked the night before, and he said he was making a thermos of water. Yeah. So we keep going, we keep going, I'm sweating, I'm pouring, I'm moving fast, it's very, very fast. Now I'm slowing down. Now I finish my water ball and I find out that he doesn't have water. <laughs> that he didn't actually bring water. And we're about an hour into this hike. We're an hour and a half into this hike. How we long is the hike? 12 hours. Oh, fuck. And we, we just started. Oh, oh uh, fuck. Oh, my fucking God. That's fine. Because I just watched a movie. About, Here we go. I just watched some, oh, I just read a book about this guy who survived in the wild. And uh, I was like, Fuck it. if that guy can do it, I can do it. I don't need water. Fuck water. Nate! So, just <laughs> keep going. Nate! Get to the ice glacier. All right. Throw on the crampons. Then I get hit with uh, a little influenza. And we're hiking up now, hiking up this ice crampons. And I look at my guy and I start wavering back and forth. And I'm like, I can't go on. Like, what do you mean? I, like, I have to go to the bathroom. He's like, no, that's fine. Go on a little bit more, I'm like, dude, I, I literally can't move. I have to go about it. It's 3 a.m. in pitch black at like 6,000 meters up in the middle of a glacier. And he's just like, all right. And he just points into the distance. Into the middle of darkness. Jesus oh like, Christ. Oh my God. Mate. Right. He, undoes my, he undoes my harness, and I just walk out there like four steps and just drop trap and just destroy the mountain. <laughs> Rally, <laughs> rally. We continue on. Yes. It gets bad. That yeah. is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, it was bad. It was bad. <clears throat> then we reach a crevasse. You know what crevasse is? No. Crevasse is between two glaciers. Okay. You ever seen the movie Everest? Yes. All right. Well, there, there's these ladders that cross between two yes. glaciers. Yes. Yes. And if I did you fall, see. you you fall. And you're dead. That's it. Death. You're yeah. So we come across a crevasse. Okay. There's three ladders from Home Depot. S ladders yeah. that are stitched together with shoelaces, and we have to cross it. You're lying, bro. And I'm like, oh, all right, let's go. I'm not even thinking, you know. I'm just walking right across, and, and that's fine. Yeah. Get across. 
Keep going. Takes me. I slow down really, really hard. I can't breathe now. I have no water. I'm dehydrated. The earth is like falling away below me. I'm like, I can't think. How is how no long is this thing? Is this well? Great. We make it across. We make okay. it across. Okay. Okay. But now I'm on this. I'm on this 90 degree base, 85 degree base, and I can't think. And he's saying, is it impossible? And the summit's right there, and I just can't. I can't go. I mean, I'm just taking two steps, and I'm like. Oh. And two steps is like you have your ice axe, you go one, two, and you kick your crampons in against this ice space. I don't know what there. any of that means, but I'll go with an it. Ice axe, an ice axe. Okay, is yes, like the ice. pick, like the yeah. fucking. You drill it into the ice. Yes. And you have these like knives on your feet. Yes. And you kick your feet in. Okay. And you basically just climb. I've never climbed before in my life, so I'm just learning this. And I told him I'd learn. I told him I knew that. And so I'm just picking it up as we're going. And we're moving so slowly. Eventually, we make it. And I start, I almost cried. I swear to God. It was almost like, cry? Mate, I would have cried hour one almost. when the water ran out. What the fuck you mean almost it was, cry? It was like being stuck in the second to last sprint for six hours straight. Hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life by far. Like there's no competition. Like nothing. I mean, comes could you close. imagine being stuck in the second to last sprint for eight hours straight? Six hours? Like the sprint where you know you still have like two more, like one more. <laughs> like this, that's the one where it really sucks. Like, it's just the worst. Anyways, we're coming down. I, I don't know how to rappel, so I just slide down and burn my glove in half. And, uh, really? Yeah. Burn a hole in it. Get to the crevasse. I, I want a video because I want to prove that I was really cool. So, he takes a video and I say, no, no, stand over there. So I want a better angle. You know, I'm thinking of cinematography. Exactly. And, uh, Good man. He's, he's got his eye on me. Do you have the, the, the video? Yeah, I do. You gonna send it to me? Sure. I'll yeah. put it right here, y'all. We'll see. He moves over and he holds it, the ropes, and now they're tilted. You can't really see in the video, but they're not straight on, which means that they're kind of guiding me off the lap. I can't. Think. I literally can't think. Now. I'm so dehydrated and so out of food. I haven't eaten. I haven't really done because I couldn't eat. Because like, at that point you're so dehydrated you can't eat and all of our food is frozen. And it was just, uh, I didn't even eat Snickers bars. But I didn't want Snickers bars because I had a Snickers right before I, you know, did all that stuff on the mountain. So they were like, we're eliciting all the effects. <laughs> so we get to the side of the mountain and we get, I cross this thing and for some reason I wasn't thinking. I was, I was thinking about putting my feet the wrong way. I, I take one step, two steps, three steps, and then I trip on this ladder. And I kid you not, I come so close to dying. I catch myself by the grace of God. And uh, and I almost fall again. And I, I just zone in and I make it to the other side. And, uh, and this is on camera? Yeah. That's and fucking I, and amazing. I, I can't really watch the video because it gives me a little chills. Oh you know? my God. But, but, I'm, but I've made it. And I said, what happens if I fell? I don't know, you're a big guy. You might have just died. <laughs> Yo, this tour guide sounds like fucking the baddest ass yeah, This guy is sad. Yeah, he summoned Everest nine times. He was like... And the whole time, I just wanted to act like I was a badass. Like, you know? He sounds like the shit. And smoking cigarettes on the summit, dude. He doesn't give a... <laughs> Like, what? That's the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, the greatest thing I've ever heard. But he didn't want me to take a picture of him smoking cigarettes. All I wanted to do was take a picture of him smoking cigarettes. Of course, of course, of course. He didn't want that because no one's gonna want to go up on the summit with a dude who smokes cigarettes. But it was. I mean, granted, he didn't bring water. I mean, looking back, people would say he might not have been the best guy. Nate, I'm telling best, you right now, he's life. not the best guy. He saved my life. This guy likes it. Yes. He saved my life. Of course. Of course. Enjoy it, brother. He saved you can my catch life. it again. He saved my life. YouTube. I'll tell you after. All right. Wonderful. Anyway, so he saved your life. You guys are on your way back. So after you you you, you cross a crevasse. Yeah. Make is it, it down. Like... I, I go wicked slow down and okay. make it down in like six hours later. Okay. Three, oh, three hours later. Dead. I pooped my pants. Good for you. I pooped my pants. Full on, full on. That's legit. Because we had to go to the bathroom at the bottom, and I was so disoriented still after we made it back to base camp. And, and you go in the bathroom, these aren't like bathroom guys. These are like <laughs> no, two no. walls so people can watch you, and a hole, maybe a pot. That's amazing. 
and I didn't pull my pants all the way down, and I just, I didn't even care. I didn't even care. Of course not. I just, uh, the, oh, whoops. And I just kept walking on. That's amazing. Like, when you get to that point, it's life. I mean, I love that. Man, I yeah, it was, it was that. really dumb, though. I mean, that's just, that's just dangerous. Of course it I, is. Altitude brings a whole other effect. And I was doing a mountain that's considered the introduction to climb. But yet, I found out afterwards, before I was told it was the introduction, easiest climb mountain, but afterwards I found out it's what people train on Everest for, because it's technically harder than Everest. You guys have three. Technically. But Everest is a joke. Technically. Okay, what do you mean by that? I mean, it's just like, like, it's just wicked hard because that oxygen level. Really? So it's more about the oxygen level than it is the yeah, actual, yeah, yeah. like, and, and using ice picks and... Yeah, yeah, there's no... Everest is also, there's like a change in ice fall, so yeah. it's just a chance whether you survive if the ice fall shifts and you die. But it's not technical. Yeah. Those are the things you learn. That was, that. that was why I went there, to do those two things. And I did them. So, the time after, the time from before you started your meditation to at the end of this hike, how long is that time? Uh, a little over a month. One month you did all of that bullshit. Yeah, a little over a month. Bullshit. All of that insane, like mind blowing, I don't know what the hell's going on craziness. Yeah, a little over a month. Nate, that's an absolutely amazing. I mean, it's not that amazing. Tons no, 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 out. Nate, it's amazing. The thing is, people do this as their career. The people who are amazing no, no, are the but Sherpas. No, the, the guides are that is That is true, but that is their career. It's not your career. So it is amazing for you to do it. Yeah, but I just do it for a couple of weeks or, or whatever to prove to people just but, how amazing the people are who actually do this stuff. You know, the, the guy who actually lives in a monster permanently, that guy is crazy. Yeah, you're right. The Sherpas like, go you know, up the the house, smoking a cigarette. The <laughs> These guys are insane. That is amazing. Houses. All right, that's one month of your life, and then what yeah, happens? I don't know. What do you want to know? So I want to know. So what we, we talked about after that is you decided that you wanted to settle down, and then you wanted to uh, start writing. But you, I mean, so the last time you talked, he was writing for these blogs, journals, articles, whatever, newspapers. I don't get what it was, but you were writing, getting paid shit money. But now you wanted to write, and you wanted it to be your own. What did you do after that? How did you decide? Like I'm not, I'm done writing for people. I'm starting to write for myself and myself only. How, yeah. When was that decision made? I was always writing for myself. I just like, I just there need to get the shit off the ground. So okay. after there, I moved to a little city in Nepal, or just I like, bought a hotel with like six dollars a night. That's great. Amazing. Super cheap. That's really good. I told him I was eating coming six. From, coming from shitting your pants and destroying yeah, yeah, a mountain and to eating the Snickers top bars. of the best hotel room in the entire city. Just, Six dollars a night. I mean, best view. I don't know if it was the best hotel room. It's definitely not the best hotel. It's I actually, view. honestly, with my, it was probably one of the best hotels. Like for what you're getting, you know, for what. You're getting. The other ones are mad rich, but those are just for dumb tourists who don't yeah. go off the beaten sure. path. And, yeah. and uh, I, I just sat there, wrote, lived next to some really guy, really cool guys, and. Uh, and I just wrote, 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 wrote. Came back and then moved to Spain where I just wrote some more. Name. But I'm back. I just got back two days ago from Spain. And you played lacrosse in Spain? Yeah, I was I was uh, playing lacrosse in Prague and then Spain. Lacrosse is a joke. But it's really cool to see how it's everywhere. It is. But it I is nice because like lacrosse it was is an American sport. And now it's all over the world, so that's exciting. But yeah, that's what you think, it's all over the world. Dude, these guys in the frog have been playing for 30 years. It's more than people here have been playing. Of course, that's a fact. 30 years? Yeah. I didn't even, I was like, what? They're like frog Czech citizens. Like all regular right. people. All right, let's, all right, perfect. Nate, let's wrap this up. So, what is the immediate plan right now? What is your immediate plan? I'm going to lead mountain expeditions in... No way. So you've climbed one mountain officially. Yeah. And now you're leading expeditions. <laughs> there's How does that fucking there's translate? Not, there's not a lot of white guys who speak the folly. Yes. That helps. And people from America feel very comfortable with white guys. People don't like black people. No. It's a fact. I mean... But if you're white and you speak Nepali and you're in the country and you've climbed the mountain... They let it like us. 
they would let a black guy leave. Well, of course they would if they had the credential. If they thought saying, he was white. Yeah, but if, if, oh, if they, it's it's a comfort thing. It just, it's just a comfort thing. No, I like the thing is you need a bunch of rich kids, right? Yes. And, and rich kids. There's more rich, rich white kids who are willing to spend an insane amount of money, way more than proportionally you should be spending. Yes. As opposed, than they should. Yeah. Whereas like most like you like. I mean, this I can't generalize for black people, but no, they probably fine. wouldn't spend a ridiculous amount of money. I'm mean, fucking. I would. Yes. I wouldn't spend a ridiculous amount of money on something I could get for half the price. Facts. And I love it. I love it. So your your immediate plan is expeditions. Nate, can I just ask you a favor? Yeah. We need to. This needs to be a must. Whenever you are in the area, when I say in the area, I mean within a hundred miles of me. We need to do this. We need to catch up, and we need to do this. Report. Well, we're doing it. I know, I'm saying, but every time you're in within 100 miles of me, whatever adventure you have, I don't give a shit if you slept for like nine months straight and come back. I don't care. I want to have this conversation on camera. I want to record it. I need to record it. I'm just fucking amazed, man. I'm just amazed. Like, it, it says I don't, that no, I, I swear to God, though. Like, I talk to people who work at Google. I talk to people who do, like, are making shit tons of money. I talk to people who's like a millionaire and they're 22 years old, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But, like, this is. This is fucking life. This is life. Everyone, look, life is to everyone what life is. To each his own, sure. But this is something that impels me to be more. That other stuff is like, I want that stuff, but I don't want to be <laughs> you. Sucks. I want to be you, is what I'm saying. Well, you don't. Well, I don't. Because if you did, but you like, would be. Of course. But I'm saying, like, you are a person I can inspire to be. You know what I mean? Okay. I think I inspire to be. Okay, go fuck yourself. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Nate, um... Plug away. What do you want? Where do you want people to find you? Instagram, Facebook, um, anything? No, no. Nothing? Just watch his stuff. Just the man, the myth, the goddamn legend. Um, and so I did promise the Lulu people. Um, we're in Lulu in Austin. It's a great place to grab brunch. Do it. Come on down. We got some avocado with chips. They got vegan options. Woot woot. Vegans of the shit. Um, uh, I actually... Don't like vegans. Yeah, because he's a dick. I was a vegan for once. No. Uh, Wait, were you actually? Yeah. How long? Like a month. I had to do it because I didn't have money. <laughs> because you had no money. I love it. Anyways, um, yeah, come down to Lulu's in Austin if you're in Massachusetts. It's an absolute must. They let us do this great fucking patio. It's amazing. We met amazing people. Um, and yeah, catch y'all later. Deuces. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And next time Nate's in town, you better believe this shit's coming out. Thank you, Swarik. Of course.